All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Three Dits Talk Aquariums podcast. Oh, we shit, haven't. Yes, yes, we are. That's what that little red oh. sign in the corner means. Oh, you're doing, so, oh, you're in the waving thing. Are you finally well, giving me a wave? Oh, you've wave stopped waving at me. Pop. Yeah. You Stand. too. Uh, oh, grumpy fella. Uh, whatever. Oh, but um, yeah, thank you guys very much for joining us. Um, just quickly before we get started. If you're listening, especially on like Spotify or whatever, I would highly suggest you go check the thumbnail for the YouTube video because uh, <laughs> that is some of my finest work, I must say. And, oh. and, what's, and what's the YouTube page name what, thing? Uh, I would assume it's the same, but I'm not 100% sure actually. <laughs> Three idiots so, talk across. Just, Something. just search it up you'll find it i mean it can't be that hard to find mm. but um uh, yeah it's we, basically we, like, we missed ourselves last week too facebook user oh uh, yes we didn't re record last week um but we did still upload so it's if you're listening on having... spotify you'll have no idea what's going on but if you watch on the streams hello um but yes this thumbnail is basically i got a picture of a guy like you know the classic guy standing there with a fish and I put Ryan's head on the top of it, and then I put him holding a big neon Tetra. It was comedy gold, to be honest. It's and not bad. Well done, like, my finest graphic design I've ever done in my life. It looks like it looks a little bit like a photo from one of those rabbit holes that I end up crawling down on Facebook, where someone puts up a photo and then asks people to Photoshop it for them. Oh, hey, can you oh, take love that page. out of it, or can you? Gosh, or can I love you that page. Me, can you put me on a beach or make me look look hotter or something? And then people just do all this random stuff. Yeah. yeah. Can you can you take away the people behind me? They take away the main people in the photo. And you put a put a casting couch behind her or something like that, you know? Yeah. Or a bunch <laughs> of fighters up in the air. Oh, I love that page. It's the best one ever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so pretty I'm glad much to hear you the, enjoy it. It's just a rabbit hole that I end up getting sucked down on Facebook all the time. I hate that one. Yeah. But I, I, I love to hate you, it. Mate. I feel you. And also, Facebook user one. thinks that it looks very real. So it's, I appreciate it. If of, anyone needs. If well, anyone's in need I've, of graphic design services, I'm pretty much, find me. I, I did used to have a boat, and I did used to go fishing all the time. I can't say I've caught any neon Tetris, but, you know, it pretty yeah, much it's just, looks real. That, that just sounds like a skill issue. Exactly. You probably could have asked me, and I do have a photo of me kissing a hammerhead shark, a baby hammerhead shark somewhere on my phone. I could have sent that to you. But anyway. Oh, well, we'll save that for, for our, I don't know. Hammerhead shark episode. Hammerhead shark, shark episode, yeah. <laughs> shark yeah, week, shark week episode. Wild caught fish. Yeah, man. Still counts. Um, but yeah, what have you guys been up to? Any fish-related activities recently? Any exciting news I knew for you? Were gonna, uh, I knew you were going to ask this, and I totally came unprepared. Well, it'd be a shame if I asked it at the same time of every episode every week for the oh, last six months. But... And it's also a shame that it's been two weeks, and you still have nothing. Yeah. Nothing. All right. Well, Ryan can go first, and you can never think. Um. Oh yeah. Um. I'm going to YouTube. Don't know why I Cam. Why I can't see who I am. I don't know what that Apparently, means. But anyway, I don't know. Apparently, because I can't. It just says Facebook user. Apparently, it's something is to do with the, the groups or whatever. Is this the same know. person, or Oops. is it a different yeah, it's person? It's Helen for the third time. It's Helen. Well, well Helen's street. name usually comes up. I don't know. Ask Facebook. Oh, oh. here we go. She's back. Now, now Helen's here. Do do oh, that was confusing. Where am I sure was. Um, um, so what have you had, Ryan? The randomest fishy thing that I had happened this week is, last couple of weeks, is I responded to a Facebook post to help someone fix their canister filter, and it was in a shop, that I, a tank that I've been eyeing up for ages that looks like crap, and now they want me to remake it, so I should probably should send her an email with some pricing on how to fix her tank up. Um, it's quite a cool tank. It's been, like, it's a... It's a triangular tank do you call it a triangular tank i don't know it's in the wall so two two um two front faces are exposed to the waiting room of, of, an, of a real estate office and then the back face is exposed to one of the offices um oh, right. sort of formulation um 
So, yeah, and it was just, it's just a complete shambles the way they've set it up. Um, yeah. I don't even understand, like, who thought about it, but all the um, canister filter hoses are too short, so the um, intake sits about, like, a centimetre above below the full level of the water. So the really? reason they couldn't get the filter to go is there's been evaporation, because there's no lid on it either. Um, and everything around it's water damaged because of the condensation and everything dropping out of it, of course, the wall and everything, because um, they've got no lid. So what happens is the water level drops and it just sucks in the air and it doesn't start. So um, they're sitting there priming it away, not figuring out what's going on because they don't. Is know it evaporation it. or is it splashes getting water damage? It's evaporation. I even know anything to evaporate to cause water damage. Well, there's water damage all around it. Probably splash, splasheration and evaporation. Yeah. I'd say. Um, also, the, the outtake of the filter, the outlet, is just like sitting on top of the tank. There's no, there's nothing going into it, and it's just a stream of water just flowing over the top of the brace into the tank. So that if you bump that, you just got flooding floods and all sorts of stuff, which is probably where the water damage come from, because probably yeah. someone's bumped it and stuff. And um, yeah, the tank's just green. The filter outlet and inlet are like a centimetre away from each other, so there's no circulation through the tank. And yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. Oh, don't worry about it. It's all under control, eh? Got, well, got, yeah. got Ryan on the case. But they've got yeah, a nice yeah. e filter there and a UV and stuff, so there's some there's some good bones. Um, are you going to start up a new TV series, Aquarium Nightmares, where... Ryan, the uh, guru, comes in and changes all of your aquariums around for the. It could be like um, payment on TV. It'll be great, except I only have one tank, so yeah, that, that <laughs> would be a problem. Although we could easily find more in people's houses, I'm sure. If there's any production Fair companies enough. that are watching us, we've just pitched you a heck of an idea. Also, the oh. filter, one of the filters in my trophies tank was unplugged for ages and I didn't realize. So I plugged that in yesterday when I was doing a water change and it smelled like poos. Yuck. You can put yourself on this imaginary TV show. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, what have, what have you had going on, Cam? Uh, I told you I'm unprepared for this. Well, be a shame if you'd had uh, like five minutes to think about it. You send us messages yeah. every day about all the babies. Uh, yeah, I had some plan. babies. I had some babies. Like, well, I can't remember where we're at because we didn't record last week. I can't remember what I said and what I haven't said. I made some babies and then now I don't have I'm babies. Waving. I'm waving at Kimberly, but not at you. Harsh. Hi, Kimberly. Bye, what Cam. kind of babies were you having, Ryan? Everyone says goodbye. I mean, <laughs> Hopefully not babies with your blood relatives. That's not okay. Well, and anyway, I, am, I am 99% sure that I saw some Black Widow fry. And I'm 100% so sure that I saw some lemon tetra fry. And I'm 100% sure that I saw some flamé fry, but I haven't seen them since. Have you looked? Like, <laughs> oh my god! I holy shit! I haven't. That is, look, I'm running it down. Look for fry. That is the key part that I missed to this whole equation. Yeah. Look, you're a bit of a sassy bitch, eh, Cam? Fry. Oh, I never even thought of that. Oh, wow, you're an I'll idiot. Even you're an, like you're an idiot. You're stupid. Oh, far out. The what is that? What is... <laughs> that? Look at, look at him. He's got his glasses on, and he's got a little yeah. board on them. Look at <laughs> no, like this, is my, this is my oh, headphone. It looked like you had one of those granny cords around your neck with your glasses. That was so good. Oh, oh yeah, cool. man. I would. <laughs> Um, oh, I was on, just I'll, trying I'll to go, check. I'll go get mine. No. <laughs> well, I was just trying to check the emails to see if we have any listener mail for the next segment. Um, but somebody needs to play read it. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, well, I haven't had that much exciting stuff happen except for I because hey, over the sum, you what? I just called you Clark Kent. That would be Superman. Superman. Clark Kent yeah, would be right. the other way around. Sorry, um, sorry. But I, um, because over summer I set up this, I have this big like half barrel that's like probably about, holds about 100 liters roughly. Um, and I, I had that set up with like cherry barbs, um, oh no, albino cherry barbs over summer, but it's starting to get cold now. So I kind of broke that down and got rid of that. 
and there was heaps of little cherry bulbs in there so that was fun and except the bad news was all the plants that i put in there that i was trying to grow um they died but the fish were okay so that's the main thing how many, and, how many did you get or was there too many to count um like how many i didn't did actually you count them. how many did you take out i i didn't actually count them but i put in maybe like five i'd say and there's probably like 20 or 30 left uh 20 or 30 that come out um, and were there five like big ones and the rest small ones or were they all roughly the same size uh they were definitely like the the original ones were definitely bigger but they weren't like miles bigger they were just like a bit bigger kind of thing you know was um, there like a range of sizes or just no nah, not really bigger? they were more or less the same um because yeah. i don't think they would have been breeding towards the end of you know the season as much obviously because it's getting colder um but yeah they're all more or less the same size like you know ballpark um which was and cool did you have filtration in there or anything no nah, just a bunch of plants but um which died they died yeah but there's heaps of algae so <laughs> that probably have helps. you have you thought about asking ryan about plant growing tips because he's a plant growing guru see i did have a bunch of java moss in there even but that just got all choked up with hair algae and died um so i don't know what he can do uh, but yeah as i was yeah. saying to you the other day uh ponds are just aquariums that someone's some idiot decided to stick outside and get too much light yeah pretty much that's it's the problem with ponds and yeah. they've usually got dumb fish in them hey down the wilds I'm just although, I am, although i am partial to it to a good old cherry barb yeah and they're really the the good thing with them getting like I don't know what you yeah, call what, it. Like what was sun, the color like suntan. from this from the sun? Yeah, from the from the. They're really they got cool. Some vitamin, but, they got some D in them. Some vitamin D in them. Yeah, man, they look really cool. Like really, um, you know, vibrant. Like they're cool fish. So, yeah, that was pretty fun. But that's the end of that for this season. I'll obviously go back to it next season. I'm sure. Um, but yeah, no, it was a good time. I'd, I'd recommend it next. Not now, but next season for people. Um, just like a big half half a half a barrel. Have you considered just leaving them out longer and seeing how they go, being that Auckland stays pretty warm? I did, but I don't want them to die. So after I was that, um, after those bloody pearl danios that I saw that go all year round up in Wellsford, I was I was a little bit intrigued too. I was considering um, changing them out and putting like some white clouds or something in there, but then i just decided against it not to be honest not for any massive reason um but I, I that would be what i would do like i'd do like those gold white clouds if i was gonna do it but yeah i just didn't to be honest so yeah they yeah, maybe do like plants growing like out of the tank next time if you can't grow them in the tank oh i did have some growing out of the tank but oh some of them were right and then some of them because where it is gets a little bit too much sun and so some of them just burned and died oh, yeah. but some of them like the grassy stuff was fine um not growing crazy but growing enough so yeah that was quite fun um and then the other thing i was going to say is just about a funny story from um you know my i told you guys already but my funny facebook marketplace story which is oh, yeah. very yeah. loosely loosely related to aquariums and I, I do have one we didn't question. get any listener mail so we've got to fill out this segment a little bit longer i do have one question about this i'm not going to give it away but did give you away, away, give know maybe you should end. wait till the end okay okay i'll go ask the question afterwards then go you tell yeah the i'll tell the story and then you can ask the question like after the story yep. we, yeah yeah because then we can bring all the listeners up but you need to build it up a little bit and set set the set the tone and, and the and the sort of like where you were Beautiful. and what the weather was like and stuff you know just just yeah, warm them story, up, warm them up. Yeah. storytelling ability isn't the best um well shut up um but what i was doing was i can't remember what day it was it was like sunday i think or something but i had this little aquarium that was maybe probably would have been about 60 liters more or less and um i put it on it was just like an extra one that i didn't really want and what was, was the weather like space honestly no idea google it i'm sure they'll tell you yeah but okay. um well, but you don't even know what day it was 
Yeah, exactly. I think it was Sunday. Um, was, it, was it Father's, Father's Day? Day. Yeah. Hey! Man, you guys, so funny. I Comedy go. Well, oh, I don't know. Was it Father's morning Day? or afternoon? Can you just we, let me tell the story? This was all, I tell you the times, but okay. you know, I hadn't got to that segment yet. Bring, bring but, your phone right. up. You've got to tell us all this information. Bro, shush. But I had this this aquarium, this like 60 liter aquarium that I didn't want anymore. What aquarium? So you said like, this aquarium that means it's right in front of you, is it? This one? Or you had an aquarium? Shut up. But it was like 60 liters roughly. And so I didn't want it. So I put it on Facebook Marketplace at about, it would have been about 10 30 in the morning that I, you know, took all the pictures and like wrote the thing and I put it on Facebook Marketplace and then whatever. And then maybe half an hour after that, a guy texted me and he was like, uh, you know, he like asked some questions about it, like, um, you know, does it include a lid and all this did kind of thing? Did he text you or did he send you a, fa- a message on Facebook? A Facebook message. Okay. Yeah. And then <clears throat> he was like, oh, whatever. And like, ask some questions to answer them. And he's like, oh, I'd be keen to take it. And I was like, cool. What time, you know, like, this is the address. What time do you want to come get it or whatever? And he's like, um, he said initially, so like, oh, I'll come like around one o'clock, I think he said. And then maybe 20 minutes after that, he's like, oh, actually, I'll just come sometime before three o'clock. And I was like, cool. You need to be there, Did be he here before. before he came? What? Did he call before he came? No, but so, um, he said, "Was it was it free or were you selling it?" I was selling it. It was like I can't remember, like twenty dollars or something like that. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then I was like, "Okay, but you'll need to come definitely before four thirty because I have to leave at four thirty because I have to go somewhere." And it was like, Did you oh, tell okay. me you had to go." No, I didn't actually. So I didn't. Could have been I knew that. No, nah, I was just going to actually uh, see my dad and my brother. So cool. cool. If that helps your okay? helps your imagination of the story, then so, are they doing okay? Now you have that information. Yeah, they're 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 having fun. We um, what do we do? Watch rugby and had dinner. So yeah, it was oh, lit. Nice, nice, nice. But um, so yes, I said it has to be before four thirty, whatever. And he said, oh yeah, I'll definitely be there before three. So like fast forward along, I was just like. You know, this was in the shop, so I was just like potting around like seven customers, or whatever. Now it got to like four o'clock, and the guy hadn't come, and I hadn't had any messages or whatever. So I just assumed he wasn't coming, obviously. And then this kid at probably it was it was, it was by then it was like probably quarter past four. This kid come in, and because it, it was there, he was like asking me about it, you know, like telling him like what types of fish would be suitable and like he was checking it was okay with like his um parents if he bought it and all this kind of thing what and sort then, of fish were so you recommending like, for it? um he just had like um you know what do he, he had like i think white clouds and neons or something like that like you know just Standard like white clouds, white clouds. didn't ask actually because this was were they this the was stuff from another tank that he already had there yeah. but you know I'm not gonna lie, not that important for the story, but just some little fish, whatever. And then, so he took, I like sold him the tank, and like I think he bought, um, you know, a couple other like bits and pieces to go with it, like you know, plants or whatever. And then I go onto the um, computer and like go onto the Facebook thing and just mark it as sold because like obviously he's taken it. And then at like, just as I was walking, like. At, at a bit after 4 30 like just i'd locked up all the doors and stuff and as i was walking from the door to my car i like looked at my phone and then i see a message from this other guy like oh why does it say sold on the listing and i was like oh well you said you were coming at three and it's like 4 30 after i said i had to go so i just sold it to a little kid who asked about it and then he was like tell me about how he was like, oh, I'm coming down all the way from Wellsford, which is like, where's if, Wellsford? If you guys, you tell me? yeah, that would have, if you waited one second, that would have been the next sentence. But it's like, probably an hour north, maybe. Yeah, like, yeah, like 45 minutes to an hour to get down um, okay. from from there. Like, um, 
you know, a decent way, way away. And I was like, oh, well, I have, I've gone out anyway. So like, even if you had come, I'm not here because I had to go out, like I said. And then he was saying like, oh, you know, then he just got all angry and he's like, oh, you should have just made me transfer the money and then you could hold it for me. And I was like, well, I'm still not Clearly, there. So even if, if you'd I'm showed up. a groom like, for $20, it's not about the money. It's about me getting rid of this and maybe getting some $20, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Really and I was like, well, I've already gone out. So even if you showed up, there's no one there to unlock the door or anything. So I don't know what to tell you, man. And then I just got abused about it. So that was good fun. I love selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. So even though he said he'd be there by 3, and you said you were going out by 4.30, he still wasn't even there and he was just abusing you. Yeah. And I was like, by the between like three, like I, I didn't sell it straight away, obviously. You know, people would be late and whatever, but it was like over an hour late and it was close to the time that I was having to leave anyway. So I just did, sold it to his you, kid. And then did you Facebook Messenger him and ask him if he was going to turn up after he was late? Um, I think so. I don't actually 100% remember. You know what? I'm going to side with the other guy on this one. I think you should have done better and you should have waited for him. You should have stopped your life and waited for him to hurry up and be there for you. It's not all yeah, about that, you, Cam. It's, it's all quite about a bit him. of money. It's quite a substantial yeah. amount of money that you yep. missed out on there. You were, you were in the wrong, not him. I'm siding oh, with him. I, I apologize. Um, Did you just, apologize uh, to him? Did you apologize to his children? No, I didn't. Um you just right. wait he's there, Kev, because I'm gonna come I'm gonna come still... at some time today. I just have to buy some stuff, so I'll be there at some okay. point. Um okay. just wait there. As long, I'll, as long I'll, as I'll be there between and... the time of 10 a.m. and 10 oh three. <laughs> oh no, I I'll be there. Th I'll be there when I I'll be there. Was, you, you wait. I thought it was a good story. I thought it was a good story. Like it's a great story. <laughs> That's harsh, Thomas. Um <laughs> if you see, if you sent some listener mail, we wouldn't have to listen to that story because uh, I've got plenty of stories about riveting, actually. Oh, uh, well, that's even <laughs> less fish tank related. Um, so yeah, if you don't want to hear these stories anymore, you can send send an email through to uh, what is it called? Podcast three idiots at gmail.com, and then we'll read it out. But uh, short of that. We'll have to dredge the the depth of my very loosely related aquarium stories to keep you guys entertained. It's um, interesting that Helen makes all Helen, about. Helen makes the comment that dealing with the scammers alone is it worth it? Never mind the idiots. But in this interaction, Cam was the idiot, and the guy behind it was the idiot. So you know, there's two idiots in this transaction. So it's never going to go well. It's like that meme about the last two brain cells flying into each other. The question is, which one was the scammer? Because that's the one that was on the wrong. And I feel that could have been Cam because he didn't wait another two hours for the dude to turn up. I oh, think. I apologize. I this sounds, Not this sounds a lot like, lot like selling fish to me. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Three Just people not I, showing up in that? I don't list fish on trade me anymore. <laughs> Because otherwise you spend your whole life sitting there waiting for people and they don't communicate with you. They don't have to yeah. old and jaded. You're like the grumpy old man. Do you just like throw sticks at kids who walk past and touch your grass? Yeah, exactly. Set the dogs on the, them. And then it's someone's dog shits on my lawn, put a photo of it on Facebook. Whose dog did this? <laughs> 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 like it's gonna change anything. But anyway, oh, you got the hair for that. I don't do that. It's funny. But yeah, so um, if you guys want to send us some emails about about anything, stories or questions or suggestions or insults, whatever. We're maybe you can, maybe everyone can send us their funniest fish or aquarium selling story. That's a good idea. That could be a topic. Be... If you've got something, something that went badly you know like <clears throat> just one of those standard ones where you leave home at like midnight and go and meet someone in a dark shady car park to pick up tropical fish in the middle of the night just one of those ones and I... um oh, I don't know if oh my god story before can oh, wait, someone wait. please check the temperature of hell helen and ryan just agree on something oh no they both oh, agree yeah. that trade me isn't 
much better than uh, Facebook Marketplace. And I'd agree with oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, shockers on trade. Doomsday is coming. Pack your bags. Prepare for it. We've had an agreement. Mm. Oh, have I told the story? Oh, this is, man, I don't know why people listen, but have I told the story about the freezer when I sold my freezer? You told um, us about the freezer. I remember this, but. Okay, yeah. I'm going to tell these these lovely listeners. Um, Almost like it's the fish related freezer, as well. The freezer was for aquarium food, wasn't it? So that's why it's right. Yeah, so like, I don't sell frozen food anymore. So I had this freezer that's like, you know, got a glass, like a display freezer with like glass top and stuff. Yeah, where you can look down. Freezer? Yeah, it's like an ice cream freezer, but um, like a beer fridge, but a freezer. <laughs> exactly, um, but I put it on. Um, this one was via Trade Me, and I put it on, and it was like, it had a little bit of like smudges on it, and like um, the stick it, it it was wrapped, and so there's a bit of like glue residue on it in that. Like, it wasn't the world's nicest freezer, but that was obviously reflected in the price. And I, because I knew it wasn't the world's nicest freezer, I took pictures of like. The marks and stuff um because like always hand it otherwise someone nice. will complain and they didn't tell me and yeah 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 exactly um so it was on a like an auction and then this guy bought it and sorry like, hell, did he buy it and, or did he bid on it well like he he they bid it and then it closed yeah. and so he won yeah. the final bid and then this was like on on a weekend and then for I think it was two weeks. I didn't like, I was trying to contact the guy to get him to pick up, pick it up. And he was like, the first time he was like, ah, oh, maybe this weekend I'll see. I'm like, well, that's not exactly that helpful, but whatever. And then like, kept going back and forth about that. And then he kept ringing me, but wrong number ringing me. Like he was ringing me like, oh, is that Stacy or whatever? I'm like, no, I'm the freezer guy. And this happened four, four or five times. He would ring me and be like, oh, hey, Stacy, how's it going? And I'm like, this is a freezer guy. Maybe you should save my number. And then he just kept doing it. And I'm like, well, this is kind of a pain in the ass, but whatever. And then he showed up. Uh, Did he know, keep like, calling maybe... you Stacy? Well, I can't remember the name, but like if someone else's you name. Stacey, he... You should say, yes, this is Stacy, and you should see my mum. <laughs> you are on fire. <laughs> because <laughs> she's got it going on you know indeed um anyway. but yes so he he like turned up eventually like say it's two weeks later or whatever he he turned up and he's like oh this is like this is way overpriced i'll give you it's sold for like 200 roughly and he's like oh i'll give you 40 dollars for it i'm like no i didn't set the price you bid for it like you pay how much you bid for it and he's like Oh, it's pretty rough, eh? And I'm like, well, that's why I put pictures of it. Maybe you should look at them next time. Because, like, oh, okay. This it sounds like I was being mean, but, like, he was being a dick. Like, he was getting, like, all up in my face about it and stuff. And, like, there was things he was complaining about that didn't make sense. Like, the inside of it was, like, um, plastic, right? It was, it was, like, a plastic lined thing. But someone had obviously had a little thermometer in there that had rusted. And he's like, oh, look, it's all rusting. I'm like that's plastic bro it's obviously just a smudge it'll come off and yeah so there's stuff like that and he's like oh like i'll give him like he was like trying to he was kind of being like forceful about it like i'll give you 40 dollars and i'm taking this i'm like in the end i had to like you know be like you have to get off the premises kind of thing because he was getting all up in my face about it and then like being all abusive and stuff and then i i was like oh fuck this and then i put it on i just like hey, language. It. well a family show but then i just relisted it on uh facebook marketplace for the same price that this guy bid obviously like still included all the pictures of the um you know sm- uh, dents and stuff or not dents like marks and stuff and then this guy's like oh yep yeah. uh, so like this was like evening time by now It'd be so and funny like, if the same guy bought it for 200 bucks off Marketplace. That'd be nah, so it was a different guy. This guy was nice ass. He's like, oh, yeah, I'll come. Uh, like, when can I come? And I was like, oh, you know, tomorrow morning at whatever time or whatever. And he's like, yep, sweet ass. He, like, showed up exactly, like, bang on time, paid cash, picked it up, was happy ass. And I was like, man, that was so much easier than it needed to be. Um, oh, and we talked about the guy who bought it. He didn't have fish now, but he used to have fish, like – um you know back in the day um so we had like a mean chat about it he used to keep um 
like a lot of uh, goldfish and stuff like you know not not comets but like fancy goldfish and that oh, and nice. he was saying like oh he had to move and so he had to get rid of them all and then he was wanting to set them up and he was asking me about um what kind of things was available now and like all that kind of thing so it ended very wholesome um he never obviously bought any fish but he liked his fish and he had to look around so it was cool as so yeah I've that's got, my other trade me story I have, I, have, I, have, I have a very similar trade me story i have a very similar trade me story that's just that i'll that i'll make it very quiet very quick but um i sold something on trade me too exactly photographed it described everything but then the guy was due to pick it up and i had to shoot out so i said oh mate it's just around the back of the garage go grab it and leave some cash under the rock or whatever and then he, he just he sent me a text saying oh i've left you this much because that's all it's worth to me and he and it was a you know, dollar reserve and he bid it up and he just decided how much he's going to pay for it even though he'd won it at a certain price well, <laughs> but that's okay it's okay. just it's like oh well, what can you do right yeah <laughs> He'd already taken it and he just left yeah. what he it was, even though he'd bid a certain amount and was fully described. So yeah, yeah. That's funny. Oh, the two, two things that has come out of Cam's story for me is that the first one, you should have done better again and you should have accepted the $40 counter bid. It's not okay as a seller not to accept anyone trying to barter you down, especially on trade me. That's what trade me is for. Just off to be fair, yeah. I potentially even would have gone down on price, but he was... He wasn't nice Baby about it. He was just like getting on my face, like trying to get all threatening and stuff. I was like, you. well, no, stop that then. Well, yeah, maybe, exactly. maybe you were being very nice to him. Have you thought about And like, that? to be fair, he was like an old guy. So it's like, maybe he didn't see the photos or whatever. Like, maybe you shouldn't know, be trying to like, sell your rusty freezer to him. Yeah. It wasn't even rusty, man. Neglected goods. <laughs> plastic right? doesn't rust. I, I hate to break it to you, but plastic doesn't rust. Well, maybe it's they the should make holdings thing. of plastic then. The the second things that I've gotten out of that is that I believe that the court has decided that Cam has a new nickname of Stacy. Fair enough. Motion passed. It will say aye. 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 Motion passed. Sorry. Stacy's right. mum. Um, look at that. You've got Stacey. it going on. <laughs> that is an absolute banger. Yeah. But or even Stacy the politician. That's a bit of a mouthful. That's what yeah. she said. Hey oh. All right. Um, so that was our, our trade me horror stories um, okay. segment, our impromptu segment. So, oh, so we'll do quickly. We'll do the random question, and then we'll move on to the main. <laughs> what do we call it? The main show, um, which which everyone's here for. So, just very briefly, who is the you know greatest rapper of all time? Hit me, me, old fellas. <laughs> uh, I will go with. Uh, it's gonna be obvious. I can't do that one. I can't say. I was gonna say whatever you want because because he's like so obvious. Say and whatever you want. He was it's right in the age where I was growing up. Eminem or Dre will be will be one you. Of my you were yeah. already like thirty. You were been forty five when he came on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Too big. Two pack, smooth pack. All right, what do you reckon, um, Cam? For me, as a, I'm not individualing one. I'm collective, collective grouping either the Wu Tang Clan or Grave Diggers. Random. What do you mean random? The, the greatest that... group ever is the Wu. Wu what Tang is, is um, the children. What is what is the definition That's of rap? What is that like is that like talking during a song? Uh, I don't know. I guess it's dealer's choice. Because like, because Jack Black, Jack Black during tribute kind of talks a lot during a song. He could be the greatest rapper. Of the okay, song. it's definitely not him. Or, but... um, or Flight of the Concords. They they do some sweet raps in their songs. Um, you know, sure. Yeah, we will. We will. We will. Or Grave Diggers for me. One of those two. Fair enough. I'm gonna say I would have said Eminem as well, to be honest. But yes, yeah. um, you guys are so white vanilla basic bitch. Either either that or NWA. How about that? NWA. Um, Fuck a bowl lease. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but what will we say? Oh yeah. So the main the main show what all the people here is listening to is Wild Court <laughs> Aquarium I think, Fish. I think they've come Very, for our rap rap. They're yeah, still man. waiting for us to determine who the rap champion is and who's gonna battle walk on glass for um for supremacy. 
right. Well, we need to get on it, eh? That can be I your think actually you can we be should send, I, think is, I think our challenge this week is to send that clip to Auckland's glasses inbox and see if we get a reply. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I Everybody think we should, and it would be so funny. Spam Auckland glass. Mutually beneficial. They have, the, send them. they have the coolest ad on the radio. How would you know? Because I have a radio that's connected to my laptop, you dick. Fair enough. Um, but yes, so wild caught aquarium fish. So let's go. When, so the main thing, I think we, Ryan mentioned it before, we, we, Briefly discussed this on one of our other episodes. I believe it was the Where Do Our Fish Come From episode. But I thought we'll go over it because we've had a massive exponential growth since then. And also it was a wee while ago, so I've forgotten. Exponential but, growth. We've gone from two listeners to three. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, that's still 30% increase. Don't question it. Oh, Ice um, Cube. Yeah, I forgot about Ice Cube. Yeah, definitely. Definitely yes, a good one. That's what I meant when I said that, obviously. But, um, so Cam was telling us about how a lot more of the fish that are, you know, you might see when you go down to the fish shop or you might even have in your own tanks will actually originally be wild caught. So I was wondering if just to start us off, Cam, if you could tell us about some of those fish that you told us about last time that people won't maybe realize is wild caught, but actually are. So what, what would some of those kind of examples be? Cool. Uh, loaches to start. You put me on the spot, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, no worries. Loaches, loaches are, generally speaking, wild caught. So um, that's like all loaches, not just like one or two specific species, like for the most part, all the loaches. Loaches, still, are clown loaches still mostly wild caught, or are they, are they captive breed them enough now? From my understanding, most of them are. Yeah. I might be wrong. Because I know from that they... They have been bred, but I don't know if they've been bred commercially yet. Yeah, yes. from what I saw, it's not in any really significant volumes or that that they're being captive bred. Like, you know, I'm sure there's some. I doubt any of them make it to New Zealand, and it's not enough to, like, support the entire hobby or anything like that. But there is some around. Um, That's but quite yeah. crazy to think the amount of clown loaches that are around that they're all getting pulled out of the wild somewhere like that. For that to be sustainable is quite it's quite phenomenal. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's a lot of fish. And they come out the same, small too, the eh? Same can be said about any fish that comes out of the wild into the hobby. How is it sustainable? Some absolutely are, but you question whether others are. I guess it's different. It depends on like how fast they're breeding. Like yeah. it's probably easier to imagine, you know, what's next? like a bunch of tetras just being pumped out rather than like these <laughs> clown loaches which are kind of notoriously really slow breeders and everything to be pulling out however many thousands and thousands and thousands of them every the, the other every thing season. to that is that like if you look at commercial sea fishing for food how many thousands and thousands and thousands get trawled up on a net per one pull yeah, and then relate that to the aquarium hobby, and how much of the aquarium hobby would be that percentage of said net? I I've actually, stuff, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I've actually been reading a book about um, like illegal fishing, like poaching, and some of the numbers is like insanity. Like hmm. they'll be like, "Oh yeah, they just pulled out one hundred and fifty thousand tons of this rare, um, rare endangered fish." And it's like, then they did the same like two weeks later and stuff. It's like, that's such a big number. Like, how many talking, specific? Are you talking eating fish or aquarium fish? Yeah. Well, this is this is fish for eating, but like, the numbers are so crazy. Well, like, the bycatch is insane. That they're not allowed to keep them, so they just throw them out overboard dead. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's just um, yeah. But anyway, I mean, it's probably it's outside much. of our um expertise but still it's pretty um pretty crazy mm. but yeah so so maybe we need to challenge option. them to a rap battle too and if we win they stop doing it i don't know why they would possibly agree to that but we'll give it a go <laughs> yeah we'll just stop our like 100 billion dollar um <laughs> business yeah for rap battle. um and then also 
Abel Tasman Betters uh, has asked a question. They want to know in that book how much was uh, bycatch. Um, well, this specific book isn't probably the best example because this is in Antarctica, um, and it was saying the only bycatch really is crabs, which they still eat. So this book probably isn't that bad. Obviously, it's still poaching endangered fish, but things that are more in areas where there's more varieties of fish, there'll be tons of bycatch, I'd imagine. That is just waste, um, you know, just gets thrown back dead or I don't know what they do with it, but waste it, which is obviously not good. Um, it's kind of pointless. Yeah. And chips and fish fingers. Lemon fish. All the sharks, but yeah. Um, so yeah, you said loaches was was one of the main sort of wild caught things that, that, that you generally see around, but what else? And, and yeah, one. And loaches are mostly wild caught. Yep. Click, clickos are another one. There's a lot of wild caught clickos that come in. Like, do you what do you mean, like, by that? Like, all the fancy clickos or yeah, you know, fancy clickos. or everything? Predominantly, your, your fancy clickos, um, very seasonal, come on and off. Um, cactus clickos, sunshine clickos, phantoms, all that kind of stuff seem to be very, very seasonal. They can, all be off, bridge, can they? They can be whether or not they're being commercial numbers breed because there's like hobbyist breeding and there's commercial numbers. So like if you're only getting, say, 20 cactus plecos at a time, round numbers, how many pairs are you going to need of them to be able to sustain a wholesale export amount of them? Specifically, I guess, given how popular plus, they are, comparative plus growing to... growing time to get them to spawn and then growing time to get them to size. All the, yeah. I mean, commercial well, growing, just, you know, yeah. the tricks and stuff, but... You know, there's a lot of stuff to get 20 at a time. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, what is there any other examples that you can think of? Um, I'd guess that most toughers are wild caught as well, would be my, my yeah. assumption. The vast majority of that them would be. That was the one that I was going to um, mention about because it happens like, like every year when you know, it gets like this time of year, more or less. And all the pea puffers go away. Um, oh, maybe not quite yet. Maybe another month or two. But for you know nine months, there's no pea puffers around, and everyone wants them. But um, but That's people are generally... breeding there. I've seen people breed them in New Zealand. Again, probably commercial I think... business. So yeah, that is kind of a new thing. Definitely, like um, it's not been as you know, it's it's not something that's been going on for a long time. And also, probably similar to the to the other thing Cam was mentioning about with the plecos, like it's not enough to keep everything going breeding Given something and getting, getting five or ten fry is not getting five or ten thousand to support the industry yeah exactly Rasp although i don't know if someone who... a fairly common one what's you that got, sorry raspora is a very another fairly another common you know in the grand scheme of the fish we've talked about raspora's will be one of the more common ones in in home aquariums i remember when you told me that when yeah. you told me that originally the first time, that was like, that like blew my mind. I was like, oh my God. Like that was, of all the fish, that would have been like the last one I would have guessed. Yeah. Um, and so that like would be like they a lot be of different out. types of red eh? Two questions and what's going on? You go first, Ryan. I was just saying, I was just making more of a statement that um, I would think like tetras, that rasporas could be easily pour, um, pumped out commercially. Been you think so? Yeah. Well, they they lay on the underside of leaves, and I don't think that they lay massive, massive amounts at the same time. If that makes sense, like I've watched mine spawn several times, but there's never hundreds of eggs underneath it. So it's absolutely commercially viable, well, commercially doable, but it could be just the pure quantity that comes. It's through. probably becomes down to an economy thing like um <clears throat> even though these fish i mean like you look at what the price of one of these rasboras is in a shop what is that what are they like 10 bucks or something eight bucks five, buck, five six bucks, five bucks, I would have five, six bucks. so that means they're imported for three dollars which means well, they're imported and then sold with a profit for three dollars so they're probably imported for a dollar a fish which means uh, by the time they're they're purchased. They're purchased for mere cents from a from a wholesaler who's purchasing them for for even less than cents from cents per hundred. Them. You know so what pre, I mean? So pre, pre COVID, I got my hands on a 
export list because I was going through that process of checking all that kind of stuff out and seeing if it was economically viable. And from memory, the cost of a neon tetra was eight cents USD, so about twenty cents New Zealand per per fish. That's, that's just raw that's, price. That nothing else. That's on an top exporter of selling it, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're making you know money what? on that, and they've purchased it from someone else to get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? That's actually more than I thought it would be. Really? Like, I yeah, I thought it would have been like close to like you know, two cents kind of thing. Yeah, one cent. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. But well, they probably, they yeah, probably I, purchase them for one cent a fish and then sell them for twenty. Yeah, one cent per hundred or something. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I get you. Know, but we're not speaking to um, Sandy from Seagrass. I think her numbers worth. The price goes up three times every every set of hands that it touches. Makes so, like, sense. If, they're, if they're buying it, we'll just go around numbers at ten, then it goes up to thirty, and then the shop then sells to the next place, then sells them for ninety, then the shop will sell them for two or something along those lines. Was the rough equation? Yeah, no, that makes sense. But um, I guess with fish, it's hard because it, especially for New Zealand, there is a lot of hands for for them to go through. Um, kind of yep. by nature, and there's not much alternative. And everything in New Zealand is expensive, just because what are you going to do? Yeah, you know, like shipping, shipping costs astronomical to get stuff here, and water is really heavy. It's one kg per liter. But, um, yeah. but, so if they, can, I had a chemistry was, more about it. If they can buy these neons for like a cent each, can someone commercially produce them? Obviously, neons and cardinals they can because it happens, but um, like for the, all the really obscure for species, rest. for the rebs borers and the real obscure stuff, yeah, you know, can they can they actually get them, <laughs> produce them that cheap, and make any money to make it worthwhile? That's yeah, exactly because the question is going back to what we we're talking about before with the puffers. So I'm not sure it's like. You know, I won't say who it is or anything because I don't know if I'm supposed to, but there's someone trying to breed pea puffers on that commercial scale. But the, what I was thinking is, like, I don't know how they will be able to, you know, like these captive bred ones will, I'd imagine, definitely have to be more expensive. Like, I can't see how you can breed that many to even match that price without... You know, some massive scale that I don't think is and reasonable in, in New Zealand. In New Zealand, it's really hard to be commercially viable breeding fish because our costs are so high. Power. I I would say else. it would be more of an issue of you'll just run out of places to send them, with like short of exporting the them. But then exporting definitely. out of New Zealand doesn't make a ton of sense because no sense unless you send them to Australia, I guess. But everywhere else is too far away, so. I don't think they can buy them in Australia. Yeah, they can. Which is, which is why they're like five hundred bucks a pop. They have to oh, yeah. quarantine them and stuff. Oh, no, I mean, I don't think they're allowed. To, no, they're not allowed. Yeah, I don't think pea puffers are allowed. That's why they're like five hundred bucks each. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to that because, like, it's in that situation obviously more economically viable to, you know, while catch them from the wild and then put them through all these different hands to get them to the end consumer for lack of a better word. But is that a good thing? Who knows? Should we then be keeping them? Who knows? It's speaking it's to someone the other day that said that the wild caught population of pea puffers is getting really, really low because they are being caught the aquarium trade. Yeah, I can Which, imagine. I mean, because they're like, so popular, it, 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 you know, the past well, couple of years, just so popular, yeah. Because yeah. um, of YouTube, I reckon. It's not something that I've really heard of before, that a population of fish is becoming endangered due to the aquarium trade. It's normally um, environmental reasons or food fishing. But, yeah, for it to be, because the aquarium trade is quite, quite eye-opening, because that's not a particularly common... Well, we know that that, that that happened to the celestial pearl danios when they got discovered. They got they got destroyed. I think yeah, they had such a small, small uh, I catch. Think white cloud mountain diamond minnows, diamond. maybe even white cloud mountain minnows. I think they might have got destroyed yeah. when they got discovered. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of a lot of Africans that are like that. Trophy is the Boise. Pretty much the entire lakes. 
Yeah, but like we, you were talking five or six, five or six wild species here, compared to five or six thousand available species. Like it's a very small amount in the grand scheme. But I think species. if we dug into it, we'd probably find that a lot of them are under pressure. We just don't know because no one really tells yeah. us. And um, and no, the I've also got this little bit of a thing of when the wholesaler tells you a fish is wild caught, it's often like a like a badge or a thing of honor like oh that's a wild caught fish yeah that's cool um but how it's hard to actually verify <laughs> if they're wild caught or not and um because obviously with africans it's it's a wild caught or f1 are, are in demand that that's what you want so if they tell you that you're going to pay more for them but you don't actually know if they are or they aren't you just trust well there's them, plenty of examples the where it's pretty clearly bullshit like um i mean clearly false uh, information that is wild caught shall we say like um yeah. you know there's plenty of people who sell like wild caught domestic strains of fish so like how yeah. will you yeah. ever I've, know you know i've seen that happen so many times there's a there's a, there's a strain of fish that that is man that is known to be man-made known to not occur in like Afri in lake malawi like africa i was going to say yeah <laughs> in lake malawi um and people are selling wild caught versions of it just to push the price up it's like, like the same that's not a wild people, fish, right like i guess for people who maybe don't know as much about africans it'd be like the same thing as saying like as selling like a wild caught pug like it's just not a thing you know like yeah yeah, yeah. it doesn't exist so it, it's one of those I ones that says in the wild from someone else's yeah. house a wild Loophole. caught veil tail fighter you know <laughs> it's like exactly on. you just don't come like that in the wild like, but it's so hard to know but because what what you said is true like for a lot of things having that wild caught kind of badge is is enough to like push the price up maybe not you know a ton but you know get another 50 percent or something for a lot of things if they're wild caught pretty easily which is obviously not good um if it's especially if it's you know not actually true if it's just someone said it and it's you know an ob peacock or some random thing like that you know um so yeah i mean i don't know what to do with that information but i'd say like for the general people listening in that is obviously be careful don't let you get you let yourself get ripped off um but yeah I mean, and I'm, I'm pretty confident there are a bunch of importers that are saying they're getting fish in wild caught and they're just getting them from the same place as everyone else but again you'd never know you don't know what they get getting you well you know if is. it's a if it's a domestic fish you know but short of that um yeah 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 is that, is that you with your tinfoil hat on and not believing anyone again you've got me to shoot. no ryan oh i was gonna say man i i trust everyone i'm peace and well love. ryan's the tinfoil uh, wheel header the wild the wild betters was one that went down eh? um that went down recently that there was a whole bunch of betters coming that oh, ended up drama. Being hybrids that they weren't fish drama they weren't wild and who knows where they came from and if they actually even came out of the wild or if they were um if someone just bought them out of asia and said they were wild to make some money who knows we just never know you just don't know maybe they, 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 they were wild because they were angry hmm. or it is apparently very likely that they that they funny. could be wild because because the people have reduced other introduced the mix them in the wild because their wild you know, habitat is so accessible so exactly yeah, especially um you know i don't know if you've seen like with lake victoria for example but a lot of the fish there is wild caught because the populations of the natural fish is just decimated so whatever fish mm -hmm. sees each other breeds with each other even though they're mm -hmm. different get hybrids still wild caught but it's a wild caught hybrid just makes mm -hmm. everything so much more confusing you know um, especially if you're not like I thought we discussed hybridization in the wild the other the other week and it was like such a phenomenally small number that could possibly happen with like i think that's a specific possible. that's a, and, that was a specific example of lake victoria though because and, of and, and, um in an established population where there is choice and where there is lots of numbers and stuff it's unlikely but in lake victoria and stuff where they where they basically got nothing else to breed with because they've been ill eaten um but it it's like um yeah. was it it's tilapia isn't it that goes around eating everything and yeah, victoria so introduced and, into the lake yeah yeah and then they just eat all the other fish and they then... introduce the tilapia to eat the 
because they want to eat tilapia because they're bigger than they're bigger than the other fish, and now they've eaten all the Victorians. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in um, you know, a normal sort of <laughs> <laughs> in a normal situation, it's yeah. if there's choice, they wouldn't hybridize like in Lake Malawi, actually, where there's actually like that, a bit that, more healthy population. That, um, I actually like that, that analogy there. Think of Lake Victoria like Nelson. Same, same. Not much choice. You just have to breed with blood relatives. It's just what it is, you know? Exactly. Um, and then yeah. prior to that, um, how do I bring it up? Oh, Abel Tasman Betters uh, has brought something up, obviously specific to betters that they don't know about. But So there was those wild uh, embellus, I think it was, that, better people don't believe was in Bellas. I don't know enough to have an opinion, but I'll defer to the people who know a lot more than me that they were hybrids. And then also there was alien betters imported, which is not allowed. Um, so yeah, that I guess goes back to our illegal fish episode. Yeah, uh, that's two different conversations. Yeah, yeah, but and, it's and the it, same it idea. Is valid. It is an interesting, no, no interesting bueno. discussion. It is an interesting discussion um, because... Something like a better is probably something like an African sucker where they've got so many different varieties and they can look very similar if you don't know what you're doing. And then yeah, they can exactly. crossbreed and you can get all sorts of random stuff and you end up with all sorts of stuff that's not allowed, but it's imported under a name that is allowed. So, you know, what do you who do knows that kind of is. thing? And how do you even know what it is without some sort of hardcore genetic testing or getting some, what do they call them, Cam? You know their name, fishy Me. scientists. It's, uh, ichthyologists. Um, there you go. Yeah, Without getting right. one of these guys to pull it apart and um, and count all the rays and the fins and the number of spines and the bloody whatever to identify it, you don't know. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I guess going back to our conversation on the wild court side of things. So it's something that I sort of, it's a conversation I have a lot of times with people, like if they're coming in, getting something they know is wild caught like you know i'll use the example here of like pea puffers if people come in and they know that pea puffers are wild caught a lot of the times they will want i i guess you'd say like specific things so what that means is like they will want to go through say three rounds of like what deworming the fish in quotation marks to make it acceptable to go into their you know display aquarium or whatever so i guess i'll throw that gut out to you guys is in, in your opinion is there anything you need to do different when it comes to wild fish wild caught fish compared to if you're buying a similar fish off of you know a breeder or off of a shop who's got it from a farm or something like that is there anything different you need to do like that worming treatment or anything like that in Be your them. opinions mm. It's them, interesting because yeah, well, often people aren't even aware they're wild caught. So how do you exactly? <laughs> how do you know? Exactly, I think for it, it goes back to I guess something we talked about. Probably, I'd imagine it would have been in the medications episode, um, which you can can listen back to. I wouldn't suggest just throwing random worming treatments at stuff and hoping something sticks, especially in New Zealand. I'm not. I don't know enough about America or Australia or, you know, the UK or whatever to give any advice for that region. But at least for what I see in New Zealand, I think if stuff was going to be sick enough, like riddled with worms enough to die, it would have died already in the quarantine process. Like for the most part, when we get stuff through to that stage where it's available for people to take home, Generally, they're fine. Um, like the, I use the example of pea puffers. They're quite often skinny when they come in, but feeding them up with a bunch of brine shrimp for even a couple days is enough. And then after that, they'll be fine. Like they're not skinny or anything. They put on weight and all that. So that's kind of what you need to, I think, do is just the only thing is they'll often be a bit skinny, but that kind of goes for any fish really. And so once you fatten them up, generally they're fine. It's quite um, it's quite astonishing that these um, those little tetras and stuff of, they, and rust borers and stuff go through so much to get here, 
and it's still alive. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like um, some of the stuff I've seen on how they get transported and stuff is not not fun. You know, <laughs> like oh yeah, hundred percent, like a thousand in like, bag kind of thing. Oh, and, and it's astonishing they make it. Like the ones that make it, like you say, must be either strong or just stuffed. <laughs> yeah, I, um, exactly. I, I, I question longevity of a fish when they get to that point like how much of that abuse treatment yeah, yeah malnutrition is going to cause issues with them down the track like yeah you lasted four years it's you know got to adult life yeah. should have lasted 12 years kind of scenario and how much is what we do as a fish keeper and water conditions and all that kind of stuff as well but yeah how much is that is preempted because the slight neglect or what have you along the way and i have the same the same thoughts about fish that we get imported that have probably not been fed very good food or lived in very good environments beforehand just to be power fed and power growing um yeah how long will they live but we've got no control of that right unless we're buying nz bread stuff so it is an interesting yeah exactly thought, we can't really do anything about that you know yeah um am i allowed to self-source a little bit here go to town yeah, i don't course. care um on Friday, I spoke to Dr. Basslier, and a lot of the conversation was regarding fish health and medications and that sort of stuff. Um, his general consensus was good water, good food, good living conditions will do the best for a fish and mm. use things like probiotics and prebiotics to help the gut health improve. And after fish have got sick, it's the couple of weeks after when they're not showing signs is when they're likely to, you know, get sicker again for bacteria and that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah. it's all about water conditions and feeding decent food and minimizing stress that can help a long way to fish health and longevity as opposed to throwing random medications at them when they're not kind of necessary. He was saying, um, he's made a comment that um, if a fish like has a legion or something, um, the bacteria isn't going to heal the lesion, you know. Hmm. Like, sorry, antibiotics aren't going to heal the lesion. The antibiotics yeah. will kill the bacteria that's in the lesion, but the fish needs to heal the lesion. Yeah. So the yeah. fish needs to be happy and healthy and eating good food and in a good environment so that it can build up an immunity and heal. Yeah. It's not about yeah. just throwing medication in. Hmm. It's about two-pronged sort yeah. of approach. I feel as a hobby, we've almost gotten pretty aggressive when it comes to medication and antibiotics and treatments. A lot Definitely. of a lot of it is throwing shit at the wall, like it looks like this. I'm going to throw this at it, well, uh, I, without I, properly diagnosing it. The problem is that it's a, it's a, I think it's a, by, a byproduct of our society as well, where everyone mm -hmm. wants everything instantly, and you know the internet doesn't work properly. You get really frustrated when a page is loading. You get pissed off yeah. when you have to wait in the McDonald's or BKQ for longer than five or ten minutes. Like everyone wants everything instantly and fixed instantly. So they think that and it's the same with going to a doctor, you know. The doctor most people don't go to the doctor anymore and will accept if they're told, Oh, it's just viral, take some panadol. They've got to have some pills, they've got to get given some medicine to fix it. You know, mm -hmm. like it's um it's a really interesting thing. So I think it's the same with our fish. People care, but they want to fix it they want i want to do something to fix it you know and i've seen it so many times and we talked about it before people go off half cocked and try and fix it with about 10 different concoctions and end up making it worse you know <clears throat> when a water change and leaving it alone probably might have done better exactly it's like one of those ones where it's like i think people just want to do something you know like exactly oftentimes the, exactly like oftentimes the solution will be like just give it a week or whatever, like mm. do an extra water change in a couple of days and it'll be fine. But mm. that's not, I guess, actively doing something right now to solve the issue. So like a month old cloudy tank is usually the one that everyone stresses about and starts adding all sorts of crap and causing them dramas, you know? Yeah, so exactly. I, another example of what I'm going through at the moment is I got some pea puffers in a couple of weeks ago. And one of them was incredibly thin. And what is the name that being? Um, Mr. Peabody. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Which I was a bit disappointed because I really want a Peewee Herman, but I digress. So, you know, a lot of people like throw some wormers at it. I worm it, 
all the time. I, I worm them with these and, you know, never had any issues, blah, 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 blah. And like initially I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. But actually, hold on, I'm going to try and go the other way and just feel heal it with, with love, compassion, so to speak, and lots of live food. I haven't put a worm in, it, in that tank whatsoever yet, and it is beginning to show signs of it growing and putting on weight just from it eating a decent amount of food. So like that's another example of pulling the cart back a little bit and going, well, let's just get some food into it, get it going, and, and going from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's a lot of problems isn't that hard to fix, but I guess it just takes time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and if you if you're wanting to just add some magical thing and have it fixed tomorrow, you're stuffed. I mean, uh, I could, if that's your expectation, you're kind I, of stuffed. I could have chucked some blue bendazole in, for example, and then still been feeding the brunch room, and it began putting on weight. And miraculously, the blue bendazole has fixed it, but there's still no proof that it actually had any parasites to start with. But it's and actually been also, the live food that it's been eating that's putting the weight on with it. Also, a lot of people don't understand science like just because you added something and your fish didn't die doesn't mean it worked or did anything Hmm. you know what i mean like people regularly add stuff to their tanks and their fish don't die and their fish are living so that's what must have caused it no you're just adding stuff to your tank it could be helping it could not be helping it's not that's not definitive and um as able to better says which we always talk about is people don't know how to accurately, accurately diagnose you know it's not even that i think it's more like you can't like an average person doesn't have the resources or the facilities to like take a fecal sample or whatever and take a look under a microscope that's obviously not practical so sometimes the the i guess solution to that problem is just to throw 50 different wormers at it and then something will probably work but is that good? I mean, Probably not. That's obviously going to be tough on their livers and stuff to process. So. Even the three of us with what, fucking 40 years or something experience between us, send each other photos of one fish of <laughs> and talk about fish stuff. And, and so, you know, we, we're not experts by any bit of shit's imagination and we don't even know, we don't even know what we're doing. We're just like, hey man, well, I have no idea what's going on with worms. Sometimes we just got to go, we just talk about it and we go, right, probably the best thing to do is to try this, you know? yeah and, and give it a go and see what happens you know we're a very very hobbyist evidence-based hobby it's worked for me so it'll work for you as and just Helen's, it, Helen's just right. that anecdotal yeah. evidence i think that's the key thing anecdotal evidence just mm. because you did something and your fish didn't die doesn't mean it actually did anything good or bad and worked you know exactly but yeah and I think, yeah, it, it, that's the problem with it all. So, yeah, I guess with wild-caught fish, which is what we were talking about, um, we're saying you probably don't need to overreact and, and over-medicate and stuff at this stage. So unless, you see any, unless you see any symptoms after a period of time, because they should be in quarantine anyway, um, that lead you to believe there's something you need to deal with. Yeah, man. Oh. Sweet as. Did you guys have any other things you wanted to raise on the topic of wild caught aquarium fish? Cool. If in summer I got some African cyclones and released them in a controlled environment in my backyard in a pond in the wild and they lived there all summer and then I took them out at the end of summer, would they become wild caught? It's funny you say that because I was just wondering if Cam's albino cherry barbs after we've just had this conversation, a wild caught. Yeah, man, give me seventy five dollars each. <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah, release them in the. I wouldn't release them in the actual wild because that would be bad juju. But you know, in your swimming pool in the backyard. Yeah. Anyway, oh, <laughs> that your kids well, never I'll, use I'll, I'll, we'll let you guys ponder that. You can email us at podcast3idiots at gmail.com if you have any thoughts on, on whether that would be wild caught or not. Let us know. Um, but the, the thing we need everyone to email us through is their best or worst um, fish or aquarium related sale or trade sort of experience. 
man i got i could yeah. we could do a whole episode about this i have stories oh, man yeah i've done all sorts of crazy stuff for aquariums but anyway maybe yeah. i'll put that in the um in the list of of topics to take a look at one day yeah um so okay yes. all right well we'll talk to you guys later uh usually when cam says this little stuff well, he's got to go do some, um, some paperwork take the cosby exactly. kids to the ball. and um this is true yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. Sweet ass. See you later. I don't, read, I don't read the forecast of the episodes, so I can't even tell you what we'll talk about next week. So, sweet. See you later. See ya. Bye.